ABC News. This is World News Tonight, Sunday. Now from our Washington headquarters, here is Sam Donaldson. Good evening. The U.S. Marines have begun to withdraw from Beirut or redeploy as the administration would have it. The first contingent of Marines left their airport positions and went aboard ships without incident today. The commencement of the redeployment was confirmed by National Security Advisor Robert McFarland, who said it would all be completed within 30 days. We have two reports on how it looked at the scene and how it looked to governments involved, beginning with John Donvan in Beirut. Moving day has come at last for U.S. Marines in Beirut. These men today undeniably knew they were on their way out, which is what Washington confirmed, although their officers here on the ground still deny they have any orders to leave. The move, it seems, has been underway for days. Landing craft burying away the paraphernalia of an entire marine compound out to the ships at sea. What can't go to sea is being destroyed, even down to the sandbags the Marines used to duck behind when the shooting started. Italian forces were also on their way out today. They have 1,600 men stationed here, most of whom are expected to be gone by tomorrow. At the same time, airstrikes by Israeli jets today underline the pressures that foreign forces still exert here. The Israelis attacked at least four points within 15 miles of Beirut, which they describe as terrorist staging areas. Foreign pressures also confront Lebanon's president, Amin Jamal, notably Syrian pressure. What compounds Jamal's predicament in all this is that to some of his Lebanese opponents, Jamal himself is still a central issue. They want him out of the picture, and they're refusing even to speak with him. Even today, Druze leader Walid Jumbalat and Shiite head Nabi Berry were in the Syrian capital, Damascus, where they have found the backing they've needed to corner Jamal militarily. But now Syria may be the power that rescues the Lebanese president. Analysts here note that Syria does not demand Jamal's ouster, as do Jumbalat and Berry. It may be that Syria wants Jamal to stay on in office as a way to bring legitimacy to whatever new order evolves from Lebanon's current crisis. And now that U.S. influence here is clearly diminishing, whatever Syria wants is going to matter more than ever. John Donvan, ABC News, Beirut. This is Rita Flynn. As the Lebanese government appeared to deteriorate further, Ronald Reagan...